job to applying to be a, yeah. the head coach here? Oh, okay. Well, um, number one, Cindy Wall did a fantastic job setting the tone and uh, building up a program that was competitive. Postseason appearance last year was a big deal. Winning the Mountain West was a big deal. And um, it's also somewhere that I feel, for me personally, very comfortable. It's similar to where I was in Salt Lake. I'm kind of a West Coast girl. I grew up in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. I played at UNLV. So Mountain West is pretty familiar to me, too, and somewhere I feel like I can be successful. So. The success they had, you know, the last couple of years, especially last year, had that kind of factor in, too, knowing, you know, a good majority of those players were coming back. Yeah, 100%. You look, you look at a roster and you see majority of the hitting, majority of the pitching returning. And as long as we can keep that intact, we feel pretty good about moving forward. So um, some real good additions with freshmen, uh, the pickup with Brady Fillmore transferring from Cal, lots of good things. You know, it's Cindy set the table. Let me come and be a part of it. Is that, so. uh, you know, in a way, you might, you know, you, you have some expectations right away. I mean, Absolutely. sometimes if you come in like when the program's just starting or when right. the team's been bad, right. you get a couple of years, you know, but the, yeah. a lot of people are expecting them to be good to get be good right away. Absolutely. I hope we will too. You know, a colleague to me, he said once, you know, he's like, yeah, the only problem with this program for you is that they just won a championship, right? So yeah. at the same time, I'll take that pressure and uh, it's a privilege. So take it and move forward. The girls have high expectations of themselves. I love to be a part of that, you know, help guide them through that. How long have you been waiting for an opportunity to be a coach this level? Yeah, you know, it's funny. I don't know that I, from the very beginning of coaching, said, oh, I have to be a head coach or I really want to be a head coach. But as it's gone along and developed, I've decided that it's something that I need to do. And uh, maybe the last year or two, contemplating it and kind of get my feet wet with opportunities and things like that. So. With, uh, with what you can share, how did you find out about the job opening? And, yeah, and just like you guys, Twitter, you know, <laughs> right? Um, our world is pretty crazy now with sports, and obviously um, it's a tight-knit community in softball, and I've known Cindy since she was up at Washington as an assistant, so as soon as I heard that she was moving on, I kind of hit her up and asked, you know, what, what kind of possibility is there up, for, up there for me? It was only seven or eight days. I mean, did you get up, did it move pretty quick? You get up here for an interview pretty quick? or Very, yeah, clearly. clearly yeah. Really quick. <laughs> what, what was that like? I mean, just one day? Uh, phone calls, a lot of phone calls, you know, um, got the opportunity to speak with uh, Christina Ventol and um, Kurt Aspie and Apti and um, spent some time on the phone with them first and then came up and visited with them and just really made sense, you know, and I'm really appreciative that they were willing to take that chance and move quickly. Uh, a lot of times administrators aren't that comfortable with that, and so I really appreciate that because it, it, it's going to keep the team together. It's a big deal moving forward. I got to go out and recruit already last weekend, you know, and that's a big deal, being visible um, and being able to be out there and let people know that we're still just moving forward as a program. What were kind of your first impressions of Boise and the campus and, and kind of getting yeah. to know the facilities that you oh, have here? It's awesome. You know, I've only been here once before. My brother got married here. I was telling Nate about 10, no, geez, my nephew's 12, so uh, <laughs> about 13, 14 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd only been here to, to Boise once, um, but knew the area enough, uh, having been in Salt Lake the seven years. You know, it's, it's very similar. It's like a smaller version of it, so I kind of love that. Salt Lake's grown like crazy, so I like the opportunity to be a little bit tight-knit in the community and uh, you come here and you can just tell it just everybody bleeds blue and that's really cool to, to be a part of anywhere you're at uh, the campus support the athletic support obviously is huge and I I'm thrilled to be a part of that is it the team around for the summer have you had a chance to, to have your, your first team meeting yeah, or? yeah last night so about 14 I think of them were there 13 or 14 Nate will probably tell me specifically but got to sit down they had some dinner and chat with them and that was pretty cool overwhelming already uh, so when we add the next group of 13 when they show up we have a big roster 27 um, we'll get to know everybody a whole lot more but reception's been really good so far everybody's been pretty excited and pretty open-minded and uh, you know I know there's a lot of panic initially when this stuff happens and I think the familiarity that uh, I have with Cindy in the program made it a little bit easier in the transition there so. what, what what's kind of your philosophy your coaching style or philosophy or the yeah. things you kind of hang your your head on that you, sure. that you want this program to kind of you know uh, do absolutely yeah number one I mean we're gonna we're gonna work hard we're gonna be blue collar we're gonna go get after it I think that's the league I think that's uh, the nature of the program here all together as an athletic department number two we're gonna be in the community and uh, number three we're gonna go after championships um, as far as the details of softball you know I'm aggressive I like the offensive side of the game that's kind of where I've been mostly involved uh, recruiting is, is a big big piece obviously for me as a head coach you need to get the right fit and bring the players in here that are going to be able to be successful at this level of play. So they led the nation in hitting, I think, last year. I don't I know. think they finished there, but you, they were near they were near the top, so that comes in with exactly. your hitting uh, background, made I guess. me really excited, yeah. <laughs> and then you throw a couple of really good pitchers in the mix there, too. Um, I think there's there's possibility to do a lot of good things, and 
you know, I told the team last night, well, the biggest goal is to get back to the postseason so that you can compete in the postseason. We learned when I was at Utah, you know, going the first time, it's exciting, right? And then it's like, oh, wow, what just happened? You know, it's a whirlwind, right? Uh, so getting back that next year or the next year makes it a lot easier to go and compete and you feel comfortable and that level of um, expectation kind of changes. So that's, that's the number one goal is get back to the postseason, have an opportunity to win games in the postseason. I think I heard you say that uh, nobody's left the program as a result of the coaching change so far. Yes, you you as kept far everybody as I locked know, down. Yeah. What was the message to the girls? I mean, sure. for somebody like Brady Fillmore, who yeah. you know just committed and now she's got another new coach, right. what message did you share for them to kind yeah. of convince them that this is where they wanted to be and to stay? First, I mean, Kurt uh, Apsey and Matt Brewer and Christina Antal, they all, you know, they did a really good job as far as sending the message to take a deep breath, step back, wait you know, and let us make a decision about this before anybody decides to jump ship. And that's a big deal, you know, that doesn't always happen. So I'm grateful to them. And um, as far as talking to the team last night, is mostly, I think, just letting them know that I'm, I'm here to care for them. I'm not here to, uh, it's not about me, you know. So hopefully I can be there for them and whatever they need to move forward, we're going to go get after it together and learn together. And I need them as much as they need me. When you, uh, yeah, this might be a better question for Gerda Absin still, um, we talked about how quickly the hiring process went. Uh, why, why do you think it was such a fit, or why do you think it was you, they were able to expedite it so quickly? You know, they really relied upon some, some big recommendations, and I'm grateful for that. I've worked with some really great people. You know, my boss at Utah is fantastic, um, Amy Hogue, and then obviously I also played for Lonnie Alameda that just won the national championship. She was my coach at UNLV. Um, she spoke with them. I had a couple of baseball connections with people that reached out, and, you know, just, just good people. And I've, I've been so lucky to have those people in my corner, and this one just seemed like the right fit. And it, thankfully they listened, thankfully they were willing to take a chance and give me the opportunity to come and sit down with them, and then apparently they you know, enjoyed that. What were some of the baseball connections? Um, our, our baseball coach knew Gary pretty well, okay. obviously, and then uh, you know, the catching coach for the Cubs, his name is Tim Cousins, worked with Gary Gontol for the last 10 years, and he's a huge mentor of mine fantastic guy and I know he reached out to Gary and in turn with Christina. Yeah. So. Well, why is he mentor yours? When did your Oh your gosh, the connections, from? right? It's yeah. like the all the circles. So uh, when I go out to Florida State every year, I work a winter camp for them and uh, he played baseball at Oklahoma. That's where my head coach played softball. They became friends back in college and they just stayed in touch and so last probably five, six years she's brought him out. She brings out the Cubs catching coach too, or sorry, hitting coach as well now. Uh, one of the Phillies first base coaches so it's pretty it's pretty cool to watch these guys come and be around our sport it's so different for them but they love it and Tim specifically is just such a he is I'm I was a catcher it's like my like my passion more than anything uh, if I could just coach catching that would be an awesome life but you know we got other pieces of the game uh, but because of that me and him really vibed and he's uh, he's he's been easily accessible and really neat so are we going to get a Utah on the non-conference schedule then? Or? Maybe, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I, I don't know. We're going to go down there in the fall to play UVU and BYU. Um, I don't think I can throw, because you can't miss school for fall games, so I don't think I can add to that. Um, but I don't know. It would be a little bit weird. It would be bittersweet <laughs> for sure. So got to play my alma mater at Vegas, so that's also going to be kind of fun for me.